Of course, it's all good. So each year, Coos and Curry County um, libraries host an author for a two county wide reading program called the Tidal Wave. Um, this year's author is cozy mystery writer Ellie Alexander. Um, Ellie had agreed to be our Tidal Wave author last year, right when the pandemic hit, and um, we appreciate her holding tight another year and joining us now. Um, several, several events are planned in conjunction with the reading of her books. Um, you can pick up a free copy of Meet Your Baker or Death on Tap, two of Ellie's books, at any public library in Coos or Curry County while supplies last. Um, for more information about Tidal Wave, you can visit www.cooslibraries.org. Um, for more information about Ellie, Ellie Alexander and her books, you can visit ellialexander.com. Um, today, I'm excited to introduce um, Ellie Alexander, a pr prolific Northwest writer um, who writes multiple, multiple series set in the Pacific Northwest. All four of her series touch on topics that are of interest to me. She has her Rose City Mysteries that take place in my old home of Portland. Um, I also love spinning outdoors and I'm intrigued by her um, Pacific Northwest series with um, her reluctant protagonist who would rather spend time on the couch than outdoors. Um, and especially dear to my heart are the topics of two of her other series. Her Sloan Krause uh, Mysteries involve craft brewing, one of my favorite drinks. And then um, her Bake Shop Mysteries involve delicious pastries. And for me, there's nothing better than a good book, a pastry, and a cup of black coffee. So now it's my pleasure to introduce Ellie Alexander and a recipe from her Bake Shop Mysteries. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me, Paul. I am still disappointed because, you know, initially the idea was that I would be out on the coast baking with you and we would be in delicious bakeries and brew pubs. But the exciting thing is with this format, we can have readers from all over the world, which we do. Like Toronto. Give it up, Toronto. Come on, Lynn. <laughs> yeah, so before we actually get to this bake, I'm going to teach everyone Tort, which is my fictional bake shop from the Bake Shop Mysteries. I'm going to teach you Jules, my protagonist. For anyone who's unfamiliar with Cozy Mysteries, though, I want to go into a little background about what that is. But I'm going to teach you Jules' signature cookie and her decorating technique because I, too, I'm initially from Portland, but moved to Ashland about five years ago. And I was writing this series before I lived in Ashland. And so to this day, five years later, you think I would be used to it. But every time I go downtown to the plaza, I think to myself, well, I should just pop into Tort and see how Andy and Jules are and get a latte and a delicious cookie. And then I have to stop myself and go, no, that is all in your head. That's all fiction. It's not real. Hey, stop. So this is fun for me because I get to pretend like we really are at tour today. Um, but first I want to know from readers, this idea of a cozy mystery for anyone who's unfamiliar with it is that they tend to take place in a small town or village. They feature an amateur sleuth like a baker who somehow gets invited onto a crime scene which we know is not really real in, in real life. Um, and then they often have little bonuses in the back like recipes. My very first mystery that I read in this genre in culinary cozies, which is a thing. So if you try one of my books, I guarantee that if you go to any of the coastline libraries, you can find a plethora of titles in this vein. Paul, you can help them out with that, right? Oh, definitely. Yep, just hit me up. One thing I wanted to add, Ellie, if you guys have questions or comments while Ellie's cooking, feel free to either put them in chat and I'll feed them to her, or um, you can respectfully unmute and ask her questions while we're while she's cooking live. Sorry, Ellie, Absolutely. go ahead. Oh no, that's great. And you can ask me anything. It doesn't only have to be about baking. This is gonna be a very fun and simple recipe. But I'm always so curious, this is what I wanna throw back to readers is, you know, why this idea? I, I have an idea in my head, but why baking and murder go well together? Like, I wanna know from you, like as readers, what is it about that? For me, I think it's that idea that a cozy is really an escape. If you pick up a title that is Meet Your Baker, you probably know that you're not gonna read something that is super intense or dark, or it's gonna keep you up late at night. But I would say that baking is a love language. So I'm curious for anyone who's read a cozy, like why do you think baking and murder go well together? That's my question. Anybody want to share? Anyone? Everybody goes silent. They go, no, it's too deadly. I can't take it. 
Well, well some of uh, Janet, go ahead. Is it, you can you can easily uh, kill somebody with her through food. There you go. Exactly. It's the perfect murder weapon. And or yeah, the kitchen utensils. <laughs> we were talking about that earlier. Yes. <laughs> Janet, were you going to add something? I was saying baking is a stress relief. And so I think it's a, a good time to like relieve stress and think about the murder and how it can be solved. Yes, absolutely. I do. I think as much as cozies are light, they are also cerebral because the focus is on piecing together the clues and that puzzle, which I, I think really resonates. That's awesome. And uh, one, um, one sec, uh, Ellie. Uh, Anna Louise, I think you had your hand raised. Yes, um, I was going to say the same. I think cozies are a great, great way to relax and just get your mind off every day. But again, it keeps you thinking, um, you know, and I think with baking, again, because it's a cozy, you want to relax. So baking kind of goes hand in hand with relaxing. Yes, I love that. Good to see you. <laughs> and I think uh, Chris also had her hand raised. Hi, I just, I, you know, I think cozies are comforting and so is baking. It's about comfort. Right, with a little side of murder, right? <laughs> That's what I always tease my son. I'm like, it's comfort uh, with a little, a little slight blood and guts. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay, well, and then the last thing I wanna say, and then we will actually get baking is, um, I like to tease going back to this idea of the fact that um, I, I pretend that tort is real. I like to tease that I play a professional pastry chef in the pages of my books, you know, like the old adage of people who are like, I play a doctor on TV, I'll come to the rescue. I am not a professional pastry chef. All of the recipes it, that you find in the series are really tested here in my home kitchen or their family recipes passed on by my, my parents, my aunts, my grandmother, my sister. Um, but usually my recipes they, they might, they look okay, but they're not going to be Pinterest perfect. They're not going to look like what I imagine Tort's display case to look like. And what I love about this particular recipe and decorating technique that I'm going to share with you is anyone can make them look good. You can make these cookies and you do not have to have, you know, a degree in design. I follow so many cookiers and pastry chefs, you know, who have all those piping skills that I do not have. So Hopefully your takeaway today is that you're gonna be able to make a cookie that is gonna impress your friends and family. These are gonna to be to die for, okay? Awesome. And I just have to add as a librarian, I love it that everybody's spying on Anna Luisa's bookshelf. <laughs> oh yes, I know. We're having Let's some comments it. in the chat about her books. <laughs> <laughs> you got a flashback. Anna, Luis, go off mute for a second so we can see it again. We, we need a quick peek, come on. Oh, oh no, um, she's on. Yeah. Okay, she's on. Okay, good. Let's see it. So I, I'm a librarian too. So oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Where at? Those librarians. Uh, Durham, North Carolina. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Very cool. You're welcome. <laughs> That's so cool. Bookshelf and envy. Um, there's a whole hashtag of like, show me your shelfie, not a selfie, shelfie, which I love. So Anna Louise, you gotta you gotta submit your books for that for sure. <laughs> It's one thing I've really been enjoying, like on the news since the pandemic, is seeing what people have on their bookshelves because everybody's being interviewed from home now. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, okay, so we're going to start baking. This is a very simple recipe, and you're going to start with one cup, which, you know, if you're here in America, that usually equates to two sticks of butter. You always, this is the other thing, over the years of writing a series that is soon to be 13 books. I have spent a lot of time in real pastry kitchens. So by osmosis, I have learned a lot of tips and techniques that are legit that I like to share in the series. So with butter, you always wanna start with room temperature butter. If you're taking your butter straight out of the fridge, two great techniques. You can zap it in the microwave for eight seconds on each side, not more than eight. Eight seconds, flip it, eight more seconds. It's gonna get it nice and soft. You can also warm up uh, hot water and pour it in a mug and then pour the hot water into something else and take the mug and invert it over the butter for like 30 seconds and it's gonna turn it just perfectly to room temperature. Awesome. Because yeah. this is a, a traditional sugar cookie base, you, you wanna use good butter. Don't use cheap butter. Like 
go for that beautiful like carry gold or some kind of deliciousness there. So you're gonna take your butter and I'm gonna turn on my fancy jewels mixer and you're just gonna start creaming it and you're gonna add in one and a half cups of sugar. There's our beautiful sugar. Goes straight in. And no and generic butter, huh? No generic butter, like I know it sounds funny, but it, you really can tell a difference between good butter. Yeah, um, on the coast we have Tillamook. I love Tillamook butter. Umqua, we have Umqua here. So, you know, like just even take it like one step up from that grocery store butter and it's gonna elevate your cookies. Awesome. In this recipe, I love using almond extract because I think it just adds a nice depth. Um, and we're gonna decorate these cookies with a frosting that isn't as traditional in terms of a buttercream. You can use any extract you want. So go to your cupboard, see what you have. Certainly vanilla works. You could do um, a fresh orange or lemon juice. And if you go that route, even zest in some orange and lemon rind with it. Um, but you're gonna add in that vanilla and just let it go. This cookie, um, you literally probably have most of these ingredients in your house if you're a baker at all. Once those have creamed together nicely, you're just gonna crack in one egg, super easy. This is another trick that I have learned from the real pastry chefs over the years. You should always crack an egg into a separate, can you see that egg? I'll come closer. Maybe tilt it always, a little bit. I know, I don't there. want to spill it. Okay. There we go, that's good. There oh, oh. <laughs> oops. That egg down. <laughs> that's the joy of doing it live, I love it. My dog will get that later, or the cat. <laughs> you always <laughs> want to crack the egg into a separate bowl though, because if you happen to end up with a bad egg, which you don't know until you crack it open, you don't want that already in your mix. So good there point. you go. Salt, we're not using any other leavening ingredient with this. No baking soda, no baking powder. It's just gonna be salt because we want a nice, soft, chewy cookie. And then once you've gotten these all creamed together, you're gonna slowly incorporate two and a quarter cups of flour. And uh, we're just gonna let it go until it forms a beautiful dough. I love how quiet the ready? mixer is. Does it seem quiet? It's very quiet on our end. Okay, good. Awesome. If you if you don't have a mixer, you can definitely do this by hand. You can use your muscles and stir it. You really are gonna wanna have that butter nice and soft, obviously from a starting point. You can also use a handheld mixer if you have just an over-the-counter um, whisk style mixer, that will work too. You do not have to have a full-on heavy duty beauty. And uh, Anna Louise said, love, love all the measuring cups, so fun. <laughs> Aren't those so cute? So this is um, cool. a Jamie Oliver design. Jamie Oliver made his own a few years ago. And I love, did anyone ever watch The Naked Chef? This was like pre-Zoom, oh, yeah. pre-everything. Jamie was like, he had his little flask and he'd invite his friends over. It was like the early, early cooking show days. Which again, I like to pretend like we're making our own pretend cooking show here. And uh, Lynn said, uh, perhaps tech guy can put together a tort branded line of measuring cups. <gasps> Lynn, that, that's a beautiful idea. I got to have the tech guy on that. So for anyone who doesn't know, um, I do a lot of lives um, with my husband who has um, been affectionately called the tech guy because I touch a computer and it falls apart. Paul can attest to this because the tech guy had to come in and help with my AirPods this morning. <laughs> He's super crafty. So he likes to make torts look like this apron. Like he made this apron for me. So we, cool. we do a lot of like, you know, fiction and real life in our house. Um, going back to books, but I'm curious if anyone else has read, like what other books do you think of that involve food? Obviously there's cozy, but there, there's a lot of other stuff in the market um, when it comes to food. Oh yeah, people Chris, do- Chris, did you have, oh, go ahead, Jamie. Oh, no, it's okay. People do a lot of magical realism sometimes with food like bakery magic, like uh, baking magic into scones or something like that. Wow. Yes, and also well done on the bookshelf there. Oh, thank you, I moved. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay. Yeah, we appreciate that, minute. Jamie. This is all the gardening <laughs> section, so, you know. Gardening, okay, love it. You're ready for spring. Yeah, I'm not actually a gardener, by the way. <laughs> yeah. but the cat might be oh yeah they are they like to dig in the dirt and do fun things they definitely make <laughs> chris did you have a comment or is your hand raised from earlier 
think it's raised from earlier. Sorry, I'm not sure oh, how that's to all get. That's right. <laughs> I figured. You're just gonna stay raised. You're raised for the whole Zoom. I'm loving this because this is the first time I've ever done a live baking show, um, which you are a pro at, Paul, because you have your weekly show. Yeah, um, but it's so <laughs> monthly. Oh, it's monthly. Okay. Yeah. That makes me feel slightly better, but still. Um, but it's so fun to see everybody's faces because usually on Facebook Live, I only see names. So this is this is pretty cool for me. Yeah, it's a lot okay. more interactive this way. I love it. Um, okay, so you're going to take that dough and we're just going to roll it. I took off all my jewelry and rings. We're going to roll it into a nice ball. I'll bring it close up so you can kind of see how Excellent. nice it is. Perfect. Um, do you have a couple choices with this? If you like a really crispy, buttery cookie, you're gonna wanna roll them paper thin, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch. I like a softer um, cookie that as you bite into it, it kind of crumbles in your mouth. This is pretty close to a shortbread with the exception of the fact that we have one egg in it. Um, so for me, I'm gonna roll them out a little bit thicker, but this is totally personal preference. So whatever you choose is 100% fine. So if you can see, I just floured my cutting board and I'm gonna sprinkle a little flour over the top and roll it out. And Jamie, this is like Ode to Your Garden. I opted for some spring cookie cutters. So I have a little butterfly. Can you see that Very or should cool. I come closer? And a tulip. So cute. Oh, very um, cool. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with a flower theme. If you don't have cookie cutters, you can use the bottom of a glass, you know, just invert a glass, cut around oh, it, cool. take a knife, cut around nice it. Work. You can turn this into any kind of shape you like. So no pressure on that front. So I'm just gonna roll it out and then, can we see that? Yep, very good. There's our thickness. Thank you. And then I'm literally just gonna cut out shapes. These are gonna bake at a, 325 degree oven for anywhere from eight to 10 minutes. I'm going to show you the thickness there. Maybe tilt your hand down a little. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Um, and then you're going to want to give them a good 10 minutes to cool before we get to the frosting stage. Okay. Excellent. So you're going to cut all of those out and then I'm going to get my baking sheet. So and, and like uh, Lori had commented that she loved the book, The Last Chinese Chef, picked for me oh. by the Coos Bay Library Book Club. Oh, our book box program. Awesome. What's the title again? I haven't, I haven't heard of this one. It's The Last Chinese Chef. And the she, it Chinese looks like she Chef. got it via our monthly uh, book box program where staff members pick books for uh, our patrons. How cool is that? Yeah. Is it not? And somebody so said it... Nancy Coco in Candy Coated Mysteries. Oh, yeah. Nancy Coco is another one that has. Yes. Yeah. And within the culinary vein of these cozy mysteries, you can really find anything you're looking for. Barbara Ross has like a lobster shack mystery with a lobster <laughs> shack in New England. And um, there's a Southern Cacalax um, club with tea. I mean, yes, literally. You name what you're looking for, you can find it, I guarantee. And I, I have to share that Jamie said in chat, I have, oh wait, the chats keep coming in, I'm losing them. She said, I have <laughs> Halloween cookie cutters and I'm also wearing bat leggings right now. So I feel very festive. <laughs> That's brilliant. And Anna Louise it. has Star Wars cookie cutters for maybe the fourth. So I will be using this recipe. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna use this recipe for May the 4th too. We have Star Wars um, insanity in our house. My son's name is Luke, if that tells you anything. So um, we're going to go all out first May the 4th. Is the library going to do anything for May the 4th? Is that a thing? Uh, I, we hadn't thought of it, actually. <laughs> we're so wrapped up in this tidal wave stuff going into right. May. That's kind of our focus right now. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Um, okay, one other tip. I like to use a parchment on my cookie sheet. It just helps ensure that you don't get any browning on the bottom or any sticking to the actual cookie sheet. Um, I also have silicone, I'll show you. If you can't find parchment at your grocery store, you can also get, and I tend to use these a lot too because they're reusable. You can use a silicone baking sheet, same thing. This is just gonna protect the bottom of your cookie so it doesn't turn too crispy. Although if you want them crispy, that's okay. Okay. 
And uh, Lynn said she made Chewbacca gingerbread cookies for Christmas. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> and then, and I can then tell you that Susan mentioned there's also crocheting and knitting series too. Instead of recipes, they have <laughs> patterns. <laughs> yes, I think that's the gift of the cozy mystery. You always get these bonuses in the back. Krista Davis has one um, that's like, uh, you can color in like, you know, the adult coloring books. So she has that where you, the cover is even, you can color that in. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of all of the potential bonuses, but for sure, crafting, knitting, baking, beer, bring it on, all the coziness. Okay, I'm gonna um, do a quick switch out. We're gonna pretend like I'm baking these, but I've already pre-baked them so that we can actually get to the decorating part. And Ellie, let me know when you want me to share uh, the examples. Oh, sure. This would be a great time to do that, I think. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share uh, some pictures of Ellie's cookies. And this is when you'll all be like, oh, okay, yes, my, mine will look beautiful. Look at that. Oops. There's the frosting. Ooh, those are nice. That was from 4th of July last year, so you can Very get cool. festive with any occasion. Awesome. We can share again at the end when she pops them in the oven, so to speak. You know it. Yeah, definitely. Through the um, magic of Zoom, now I'm going to come with my pre-done cookies, and I will hold these up close for you, too, to kind of give oh, you a nice. sense of what they look like. That's the yeah. side. And then they're just slightly golden on the bottom. But this is going to give you, when I break it, it's still just it's soft. It doesn't do like a, a snap snap. But if you like a snap, go for it. And Ellie, okay. um, somebody wanted to know who did the coloring mysteries. Oh, was that Krista Davis? That's Krista Davis. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I'm Janet, blanking Janet on the, answered. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you, Janet. I'm blanking on the title, but if you go look for the cover, you will, you'll know right away because they're so cool. <laughs> awesome. Um, I am curious whether anyone is a professional cookie decorator or baker at home, or are you all pretenders like I am? I, I'm, we're getting yes nods to the pretend baking or okay. pretend decorating. <laughs> pretend decorating, right. I'm doing a quick rinse of my mixer here while we pretend like the cookies are baking. And if, if anybody, does anybody have any questions for Ellie at this point? Is anybody cooking along? No, nope. everybody seems good. All right. Okay. You can ask me things that aren't related to baking too. Oh, totally. Oh, I'll, I'll allow it. This Appreciate time. that. <laughs> oh, and Jamie has uh, posted a link to her Goodreads cozy mystery list that has 892 titles and counting. If you, if you all want to join me on this adventure, she says. 829 and counting. Is that what she I just I think said? it was 892. <laughs> 892, Ellie. And I just added like 25 titles last night. <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> my, my AirPods are down. I can't handle that. How, how, many, of those, how many of those have you read yourself? Uh, okay, I'm not going to talk about that because I have 12,000 books on my want to read list. So <laughs> that's a lot you need to know about me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with this list? Like, what are you? It, is it um, segmented in categories? I did try. I did cozy Christmas mysteries. And then I was like, if you separate this into cozy bookstore mysteries and cozy bakery mysteries and cozy. And then I thought, okay, now you're just getting overwhelmed. And I was like, just leave it in cozy mysteries for now. <laughs> wow. And, and Maureen said, and I no thought idea. my 2000 books was over much. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to think about mortality at all. And I'm like thinking, wouldn't it be cool if when you pass on, you could just bring your book knowledge with you into the next life so you can keep it up going? That would be great. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yes. Yeah. Can we make that happen? <laughs> I think we can. Let's just be like, shoo, it's done. Send it to I say yeah. to do it. He'll figure it out. 
<laughs> he'll totally figure it out. He's down with that 100%. <laughs> Well, and the thing is, I've just noticed, um, I, I did not get into this trend because I was already writing professionally. So the one thing that people don't tell you, and I feel like it's my duty to warn anyone who might at some point in time want to write a cooking mystery, which is when you're writing them yourself, yourself, it's very hard to read them when I'm working on my own book. So I grew up loving cozies, but I have to segment them for when I'm not working on a project myself. And so then I will like binge like crazy. Like this, the last few weeks I've been on a break between books and I'm just like, okay, I can go, I can go, I can go. But I noticed on social, there's this whole trend of, of um, you know, your TBR stack for the month. And these people who are reading like 150 or 200 books a month, I think I would have just like had a full blown panic attack. How do I keep up with so much pressure? That's a lot. It's a lot. It's amazing, but it's a lot. So no book envy is my point. Read, read what you want to read when you're going to read it. Um, I'm still waiting to hear whether that um, book box, <coughs> I just got a tickle in my throat, uh, is nonfiction. Do you know? Did anyone ever answer that? You, it's a uh, our our book box that. program? No, the, uh, the Chinese, um, the last Chinese chef, if it's, is it nonfiction? Oh, I can't remember who, who mentioned that one. Tell me if you remember, it's no big deal. Um, I'm switching out for our frosting to my other beater. Can you see this whisk beater? Yes. Okay, you don't have to, but if you have one. Um, so I have already put my powdered sugar into its own dish. For anyone who has not used meringue powder before, you can get it at like, any Michaels or baking supply store. It looks like this. Um, it's gonna Perfect. help really build that fluffiness in. Now for this cookie, we're gonna flood it. So you don't want the frosting to be too thick. Um, and some of it is just based on your eye and practice. <laughs> so my recipe, I believe says like three to four tablespoons of water, but as you'll see, we're just gonna play around with it. If you're really wanting a fluffier meringue, you can do less water, but it's not gonna work as well for our dipping technique. So before I put anything into the mixer, I'm gonna mix my meringue powder in with my powdered sugar first. So I'm just gonna gently kind of whisk it together to get it pre-mixed. It really smells like, um, it's kind of got an almondy. It's like a meringue, like if you had a toasted meringue, I love it. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to share a little nostalgia from Lori. She said, my husband and I both went to Southern Oregon University back when it was Southern Oregon State University. She said, Lark, we, visit, yeah. we visit Ashland often. Your books make, make me miss Lithia Park, downtown, and all of the things I love about Ashland. And she also said the novel's nonfiction. Oh, good. Oh, yay. All right. Perfect. Thank you for all of those. <laughs> well, I guess it's not a novel. I corrected. <laughs> it's nonfiction. I'm, I, the reason I'm asking is because I'm starting Big Shop 15 in earnest on Monday. So I'm going to be back to not being able to read um, as much fiction. So that's going to be on my TBR list for Monday. Um, awesome. Sock. Sock was the way SOU used to be called, Southern Oregon College. I almost went to Sock. I ended up going to U of O, go Ducks. Um, but it is so beautiful. And hopefully soon we can all be together and baking again. Okay, so whew, I've made a nice powdery mix. Um, I'm just putting this in the mixer. So all this is is powdered sugar and your meringue powder. Excellent. One thing I can tell you is if you don't have meringue powder, an easy way to um, kind of hack this is just take regular powdered sugar and then um, again, maybe orange juice or lemon juice, some sort of citrusy juice. You Use that as your bin frosting that way with nothing more than those two ingredients. Powdered sugar, same amount, two and a half cups, a good three to four tablespoons of an orange juice, a lemon juice, maybe a little bit of vanilla, whisk it by hand. That's your backup for this, okay? Great. Okay, then I have a mixture of vanilla and almond extract that I'm gonna pour directly in. And then I've got my water, which again, you're gonna play this by ear. I'm, I'm saying three to four tablespoons. 
you're going to start with less, you can always add more. So I usually add a tablespoon at a time and then um, let the mixer do its thing. We'll check it. And, and what are we checking for, Ellie? Wait, right, right. We're checking for consistency. Um, we want this to be a pretty thin frosting. We want it to hold. Um, this is a frosting that's going to cure really quickly, which is great. It's also a frosting that is the opposite of buttercream. Buttercream is whipped and it has all that butter and thickness, you know. So on a traditional old school sugar cookie, you might have like a thick layer of frosting, right. um, something that you could pipe. This we want to have be pretty thin. I will show you um, when I get to the consistency that I want and um, what it looks like. I'm gonna grab my decorating supplies. This is where we get to feel crafty. It's going. And then um, with this, you can really get it whipping too. I don't know if you can hear my mixers on pretty high at this point. A little bit. We can see it. You can see it. You can see it. We can <laughs> That's see it something. churning. It's churning. It's doing all the work. That's why I personally love a mixer because it's easier. Let's be frank. Hey everyone, did you see that bookshelf right above Ellie's mixer? Those look like cozy mysteries. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> oh, I'm spying in your house. Good idea. <laughs> yeah. Spy away, spy away. <laughs> okay, I have a I'm feeling we know of... who wrote those. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Is anyone reading anything fun for the weekend? I want to hear Fine. your current reads. I am reading um, Paris is Always a Good Idea by Jen McKinley. She is also a cozy mystery writer, but she writes rom-coms as well. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I got it because I got my second vaccine on Monday and I knew that I might, um, well, let's be real. It's just, it's also a great excuse to say like, I need, I need to stay in bed and read for a couple of days. There you um, go. And uh, Maureen said, here's another good nonfiction, how to bake pie, and that's P-I pie, an edible exploration of the mathematics of mathematics by Eugenia Chang. Ooh, okay. That sounds phenomenal. I'm yeah, down for cool. that. Okay, I'm gonna come show you what it looks like. Excellent. So you'll see, here we go. And I'll show you off of that. We should have like a nice drip, okay? We so want it to be still running a little like liquidy. This. Yes, exactly. Okay, good stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, this is where you're all gonna look like professional pastry chefs. We're gonna impress all your friends with those Yoda cookies or whatever. We're gonna take the bulk of this and we're gonna put it in a bigger bowl like this, something that we can dip the full cookie into, okay? Cool. And then we're gonna take what's left and we're just gonna take a little tiny bit and I got a glass bowl for this so you can see, you know, like a tablespoon and divide this up with colors. Okay, so I've just got a tiny little bit because it's not gonna take much. So I'm gonna take, again, if you don't have, I'm gonna use gel food coloring for this because they just have an intenser flavor. Um, no, cool. not flavor, color. They have cool. no flavor, <laughs> color. Um, so this is actually like a thick gel paste for a food oh, coloring, interesting. okay? So you're gonna stick a toothpick in there and mix it around. So this is pink, doesn't look pink yet, but we're gonna take that into our short little one. Just stir it in. And just stir it in. 
And you're and gonna Ellie, I'll, get... I'll have to share the chat from this session with you later because people are going off on books and stuff. And I just okay, can't. Yay. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt you every time. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like my book recommendations. So no, that's I fantastic. will share all of it later. So you that's don't great. miss out. And you can probably find a lot of these at your library, right? I hope so. <laughs> you can find all of them on Jamie's to be read list. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, so see how intense that color gets pretty quickly. If Definitely. you don't have gel food coloring, that is okay. We can go with like, this always reminds me of my grandma's kitchen who has these, right? <laughs> it's totally fine to use regular or if you have um, some kind of a, a natural, all natural, there are some amazing like beet and um, different blueberry natural food colorings on the market. You can use anything. But the key to this is we're just taking a little bit to divide out our colors. We don't need a lot. A little bit goes a long way. And I'm just going to do one more so that our cookies can have a lot of color. I'm going to go for a pretty little yellow. The problem with the never growing um, TBR list is like, how do you choose? It's very hard. <laughs> That's always my question. How do you choose as a librarian, Paul? Oh, it's, it's hard. And before I was a librarian, I worked in a very large bookstore for 18 years. So my, my book collection that, is quite intense. <laughs> would that very large bookstore be in Portland? It, it is, yes. <laughs> Could it be a name? You know the one. Well? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the gift of being a professional writer is that I get a lot of advanced reader copies from the publishing house. Like right now I'm blurbing three different books, but it's the same thing. It's like, it's a blessing and a curse because I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. I want to read that, but oh no, I also have to read this now. And yeah. yeah. That's the one thing I miss from working at the bookstores. I could get just about any book for free before it came out. <laughs> Right. It's very do, you, nice. do you get arcs with the library so much or not? Yes, but not not on the same level because we don't we don't buy as much. You know, right. we don't buy quantity sure. of titles like like you do at a store. <laughs> right. So they're much eager, okay. to, much more eager to give you free stuff when you're buying more. Yeah, go figure. Isn't that funny? <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to start with our cute little spring tulip. So I'm going to come close again. So the reason that we have this bigger bowl is your first step in this process is you're literally gonna take the top half of your cookie. So this is the part that you want to decorate and you're gonna dip it straight in, just face down, let it wiggle around and then give it a minute to kind of drip off <laughs> and you've got it covered, okay? Cool. So now while it is covered, while we've flooded it just like that, that's called flooding. Um, thank you, Christina, who is my pastry muse. She's a professional pastry chef out of Seattle. She owns a bake shop called Tear, um, and she is just a genius. Okay, awesome. so now I've got my beautiful purple. Can we see that? Oh, very nice. Okay, and I've got a toothpick. <laughs> I've got a toothpick in it. <laughs> this is the beauty of live baking. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to show you this and not have it go everywhere. Is we I'm gonna see pretty take. Good there. Okay, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna draw a line. Okay. Can you see that line? We can. Okay. I'm gonna draw another line and I'm gonna draw a third line, okay? Cool. So it looks like that. And then I'm gonna do another color. I'm gonna pick yellow and I'm gonna be very angry at myself because this is husky colors and I just said that I am an Oregon duck. So, you know, I'm gonna take <laughs> the yellow and I'm gonna run through the purple with it. Oh, okay. Yep. And I'm gonna just keep doing that. And then I'm gonna come the other way a little bit. Nice. And maybe to top it off, I'll go ahead and I'll do some pink dots and I'll just go dot, dot, dot like that. And then I'm gonna swirl those down like that. Cool. And then literally you can keep going for as long as you want, as short as you want, whatever starts to feel good for you. 
You can add more color, you can add less color. You can turn, I'm, I'm gonna turn this one into kind of what feels more like a, a little tie dye swirl pattern. Um, and you go until your little heart desires. Okay. A Anna so Louise said, so easy. I wondered how that was done, thanks. Isn't it and, amazing? And Lori mentioned yeah. that you're using Marshfield Pirate Colors, which is our uh, local high school here. <laughs> um, ooh, I just knocked over my light. Um, my best friend from college is a Marshfield alumni. So I know Marshfield well. Okay. Awesome. Um, I've got one other way that you can do this. So cool. we've still got our dipping bowl, right? That sure. as of right now is just white. This time, what you're going to do is you're going to take all of your colors. So again, I'm going to take my yellow and I'll try to hold it up. Um, let's see. Yeah. I'll hold it up like this. I'm just going to drop some yellow swirls in there like that. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing. You would want to do this part at the end because once you've done this, you can't go back to white, right? Yeah, there's no more um, white now. <laughs> yeah. And let's add a little pink too for our spring fun. Okay, so I'm gonna take that and then it looks like this, Cool. right? It looks like a kaleidoscope of color. Looks and like a Jackson time, Pollock piece. It is like a Jackson Pollock. We're doing Jackson Pollock cookies. I'm awesome. gonna take my cookie and do the same technique I did before. I'm just gonna take it, drop it in, let it drip, drip it all off, and wait for the big reveal. Cool. Ta-da! It's a little psychedelic. It is psychedelic. I went with like, <laughs> we're grooving, guys. Yeah. Uh-huh, we've got Very our, groovy. I should be wearing my tie-dye. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna call these uh, tie-dye. But And then you can make any pattern you want with them, you know, so you can do horizontal lines, you can do vertical lines, you can do a circle and start and kind of spiral out through that and then oh, right. um, take the tip and whisk it and make kind of like a star pattern. You can get super creative. And as you can see, the finished product is going to look like you're a pastry chef. And we will all know the secret that we're not. <laughs> I won't tell anyone. And uh, okay. Jamie said she loves it. Looks so good. Yeah, yeah, they look great. Um, again, the reason why I like this soft cookie then is because you're really just getting that glaze on the top, you get a nice crispy glaze. This is gonna firm up in about 20, 20 to 30 minutes. It will become hard to the touch because it's that sugar and meringue base. So um, these hold up really well. You can store them in an airtight container once the um, frosting has set for a good week or so. Um, and that's why you really wanna infuse that flavor into the cookie itself because this frosting doesn't have quite as much flavor. That's why I always say use a couple different kinds of an extract in the frosting. Today I used vanilla and almond, but you can use whatever you're in the mood for. So do you, you don't have to refrigerate the cookies to get them to harden up, Ellie, they just do? They right. just do it like magic, yeah, yeah. Right. 20 minutes from now, the cat can come in and um, try to get to this frosting and she will be unsuccessful. No wow. prints on these peppers. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Yeah. Anybody else that have any it. questions Does for Ellie? Does anybody have any questions? Uh, Janet asked, how long does it take Ellie to write a book? Oh, that's a great question. So Janet, usually what happens is I delivered book 14, which will be out in December. I delivered that book in mid-January. And as soon as I send it off, actually probably a little before I send it off, as I'm doing like the last round of edits, I'll start thinking about kind of themes for the next book, what, what's happening with the character arcs, especially some of the secondary characters because this is a long running series. Um, and then once I deliver the latest book, I'll spend about, I don't know, three or four weeks kind of working on a plot outline for the next book, but not not like in an all day kind of way. It'll just be like kind of in the peripheral, I'll start thinking about that. And then on Monday, actually, I start in earnest my word count. So I write 2000 words every day when I'm working on a new book, Wow. Monday through Friday. And that gets me just a terrible first draft in about six weeks. 
So I will write this terrible first draft that none of you would ever want to read. I mean, I'm saying it's terrible. It's like, she sat, they talked, they ate a cookie. Um, you know, we're hopefully in the final book, I'm describing the flavors and the beauty and the process. Um, so I'll finish it in six weeks. I will not touch it. I walk away. I work on all kinds of other things. I read cozies again. Um, and then maybe like three months later, I come back to it with really fresh eyes. And then I start editing. And every edit is um, a different layer. So the first layer is like fixing things that were wrong with the first draft, which is a lot. And then I'll do kind of an Ashlyn layer and a character layer. And then the last thing I do are the recipes. The last layer is always the food. So if as I'm typing, I'm like, Jules had a banana caramel tart. I will then go back through and go, okay, well, do I have a recipe for a banana car caramel tart? Can I make that? Like. <laughs> I'll go make it a couple times to practice and to take notes of like how I did it and what the kitchen smelled like and what the sensory process was like. Um, so that process probably takes another couple months. Um, and then I send it off to my editor and it goes through rounds. So I would say my, it takes about six months to complete a book and then another six to eight months to go through all of the edits that happen in the publishing process. Very cool. Um, and uh, Lori wanted to know what your favorite restaurant in Ashland is. Oh, eee. my favorite? There's so many, Lori. How do I choose? I mean, I would say for right now, because it's spring, outside of the Winchester Garden is amazing. I set a book at the Winchester Inn. Um, that's a cup of holiday fear, but they have this beautiful garden outside and yeah. Nice. But really, if you come to Ashland, there are so many. It's hard to choose. You can't go wrong. What's What's the name of the? I haven't been to Ashland in a few years. What's the name of the the brewery? It's like Falling something or, gosh. Oh, Standing Stone. Standing Stone. Thinking? Yes. I, yeah. I always like to stop in there for their kimchi burger. It's very good. Oh yes, my husband loves that one too, and they have a great back deck too that has a nice view of the mountain that way. Yeah. Oh, nice. Very cool. Um, Lynn asked, have you ever thought of how or if you might end the series? Oh, well, <laughs> I don't want to end the series anytime soon. Uh, you already know that then we're going to have 15 books and my hope is that it gets renewed again after that. Um, so I see it running for a long time. I would like it to go 25 to 30 books, um, but I do have an idea for how I might end it. And um, it would involve, well, I can't even tell you. No, I'm not going to tell you because it would be a spoiler if you've read the series. But I do, I I do have an idea. <laughs> but I, yeah, um, I don't think it's anytime soon. The goal would not be anytime soon. But yes, I have an idea. And I think you all would love it. <laughs> awesome. And Susan was wondering if you make the craft beer too. I do not brew, Susan. No, uh, my husband is a home brewer. Um, and we lived in Portland for many, many years. We're both Portland natives. So there's a big beer scene, as you know, Paul, oh, in yes. Portland. And um, so when I was working on that book, that was kind of in the, in the forefront of my head. And then he, he likes to dabble in homebrew. I think there's a lot of crossover with baking and brewing. You know, you have this science piece, you have, you know, the ingredient piece. Um, so I like, I like that element of it. But Portland also had this founding society called the Pink Boots Society, which is a group of women who help um, other women come up in every aspect of the craft, you know, whether it's women who are actually doing the brewing as head brewers or in marketing or in distribution, beer tenders. Um, and I just loved that concept for a character because, you know, you don't Very necessarily cool. think of women in beer. Yeah. And um, Anna Louise was wondering, how many recipes do you have to do you have to try for the bake shop? And then she said, also, how many craft beers for the Sloan series? <laughs> well, I, I would say much fewer on the beer front because I just talk a little bit about beer and not including how to brew recipes right. because I could not do that. Um, I would say, oh my gosh, you know, that would be interesting to go back and think through. I mean, I get a lot, I have a lot of baking fails in the process. So I would say for every, most books have seven recipes in them. For every seven recipes you see in the final book, there were probably 10 to 11 total initially. And so three to four of those were fails or just things that I'm like, oh, this is way too complicated. 
Sounds like both the recipes and the writing have rough drafts. Yes, very rough. <laughs> and then people are saying, asking how do they taste? Um, somebody asked if you ship. Somebody said, can we all come over for cookies? <laughs> Please come, come! I know. And then Lynn was wondering if you would <laughs> ever put out. I would take it in real life. Uh, Lynn was wondering if you would ever put out a tort recipe book. I would love to do that at some point in time. I just would want it to look like I moved my Jamie Oliver. I would want it to look beautiful, um, because in my mind, the tort aesthetic is warm and cozy and inviting, but also elegant. So I would just, I would want it to have gorgeous pictures. That would be my goal. And Anna Louise would love that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because the way the recipes are in the back of the book, they're just in text, you know, because it's part of, so it's, it's great, but I would want it to be a, a visual tour of deliciousness. Definitely. Got to have those examples. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm trying to catch up on everything that was put in the chat, but did anybody have any comments or questions I might have missed? And people can feel free to unmute now. We're just chatting. <laughs> Anna Louise, do you have your hand? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I don't know if anybody caught it in the chat. Nellie, I apologize that this is not your publisher, but Kensington okay. Books does this uh, cozy mystery, uh, read more cozies. And I'm gonna open it up. It looks like this. And then it oh, has cute. the cozies divided by whatever they are, whether it's crafts, whether it's baking, um, cool. you can go to Kensington Books, but then the other cool thing is they send you a cozy card. And if you read any 10 cozies and mail it back to them, then you get a free cozy book in the mail. It's like a, a coffee punch card for cozies. Yes, yes. That's awesome. Yeah. And yeah. Anna Louise, so you said that was Kensington Publishing, right? Kensington Books Publishing. I posted the link in the chat for everyone. So Thank if you, you just go and sign up, they'll send you the little booklet and then they'll send you the cozy punch card and off you go. Happy That's reading. That's awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. I love it. Kensington. Yeah, I'm a proponent of, I think you should read everything. Like, and even if you don't read my book, just read, go to your library. Like there's nothing better than reading and we all need as much reading as we can get, especially now. Agreed. Makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. And because we can't me travel too. and go places, like this is how I'm escaping. You know, I'm going to Paris. We're on the pages of a book right now. Definitely. More, more reading, more music, more art, more poetry. I just, I'll take yes. it all right now. <laughs> yes. Yes. We have to put more good creative energy in the world too. Definitely. So I have a question for everyone. One of the things I'm really obsessed with is unusual settings or just funny weird settings for cozy mysteries what are some of like the weirdest concepts or settings you guys have read about in cozies good one jamie Ooh, that is a great one heather blake had um that uh witchy mystery series that i i'm so bad at titles after i leave um i just i liked the setting of that because it's salem and she added some touches of um the, the witch trials and everything um, but there's got to be more. There's definitely more. There is an Amish um, matchmaking series, which you would think would not be a cozy mystery setting, but it's really a lot of fun. It's by Amanda Flower. Amanda Flower. And, Amanda yeah, Flower, so. cool. Mm -hmm. For some reason, cozy mysteries set around apple orchards never fail to make me laugh because it seems so <laughs> obscure. <laughs> <laughs> some kind of dichotomy um, okay. going on there <laughs> tracy tracy weber had a yoga series in seattle did you read that one no um, <laughs> yes that's great um because you know it was all like murder strikes a pose and, uh, <laughs> i think you just expanded jamie's list <laughs> okay good oh, you're no. gonna get to a thousand jamie <laughs> a thousand it's happening <laughs> it's happening maybe tonight <laughs> probably tonight you better get reading <laughs> Anybody else have any other comments or questions? I'm, Sally, it was I'm great. Looking, oh. One more time. Just said thanks to Ellie. It was great. 
Thanks, Susan. Yeah, great job. A lot of fun. You got me over my fear of live cooking. I just want to show you, like, it's fully solid already. Like, we're good. Oh, nice. That's how quickly it cures. Oh, and I can I can share uh, the finished picks one more time too, if you like. Hold oh on. yeah, sure. So again, here here are the the finished product. Yeah, so that I just went with a single color, but there I went all out for Fourth of July. Very cool. I would buy those in a bake shop, right? Totally. I like, wow. I'd buy them right now to go with my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Anna, Anna Louise. She said, thanks to all, Ellie and Paul. Paul and Ellie, you were great. Thanks, Anna Louise. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for everybody for coming. It was too. a lot of fun. What is so that, Ellie? Fun. It was so great to have so many book shares. I'm going to go back through the comments and take rapid notes. <laughs> I'll, um, hey, could you go through just briefly, not all the details, but the upcoming stuff around Ellie's uh, visits? Please. Yes. Um, actually, I might just try to share my screen so I don't get this um, wrong. One second. Let me pull something up here. Because we have a flyer. You're talking about all the tidal wave stuff, right, Susan? Yes. Okay. One second here. Hold on. Forgot it's .org, not .com. <laughs> And this is why we all need to always just show as much love as we can to our libraries because the coastline libraries are doing such amazing things. Like, and especially right now, these points of connection are so amazing. Thank you. Okay, so if, if you guys go to cooslibraries.org, you'll see this flyer for all the um, tidal wave um, events related to Ellie and her books. So the kitchen demo was today. I think the next one is our author talk on Thursday, right, Ellie? That's right. Yep. So um, we'll be getting to know more about Ellie and her books um, this Thursday night at uh, or next Thursday at 6 p.m. Then we have the scavenger hunt um, that's that's going on right now. Um, and we're, we also are helping Ellie write a book, right? Yes. And everyone can join in on that. Yes, please We're do. We're writing a book together. We're doing a short spinoff mystery. And, oh, did you guys have a discussion last night, Ellie? No, that wasn't with me. That must have been. Oh, that must have been just like a library event. I forgot about the book club discussion. That was last night. Did you catch that, Susan? Yes, thanks. I had, I just wanted everybody else to, particularly those out of town, to see what else was available. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you, you like I said, you can always go to cooslibraries.org. Um, we also have them all on our events calendar at uh, cooslibrary.org. Um, also on the, you know, on the different libraries' Facebook pages, there's multiple ways to find out about this stuff and get involved. And people are saying, thank you so much. Ooh, that's fun. Thanks so much for doing this, Ellie. Awesome. Thank you all so much. That was a fun yes. Saturday morning. <laughs> so great. Now I need to make myself a cup of coffee and eat some cookies. So when are we doing this again, everybody? Let's go. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and it, th those who like to um, cook along, I do do a monthly cooking program every fourth Thursday at 530 called Community Cooking with the Co-op. And you're all welcome to join us. We're making an awesome uh, ramen bowl next month. Ooh. Or this month, Ooh. actually. I forgot we're in May today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if you go to our events calendar at coosbaylibrary.org, you can see an example of Jamar's awesome ramen bowl we'll be making. It's amazing. Neat. Ramen. I am here for the ramen. Mm -hmm. And everybody's welcome because mm -hmm. it's on Zoom. <laughs> I think there's some noodle shop mysteries too, by there the way. There we go. <laughs> yes, there are. <laughs> Maybe that last Chinese chef book might have some clues. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Well, thank you so much, Ellie. That was great. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Our happy pleasure. Happy baking, everyone. Happy May 1st. Yes. Happy spring. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Thanks Thank all. Thank you.
Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Take care, everybody.